Sephiroth and welcome to episode 135 of the World of Goldcraft. As usual, I'm your host, the Lazy Goldmaker of the LazyGoldmaker.com, and we're coming to you live from uh, from Twitch TV slash Lazy Goldmaker, where I record this. Um, if you're following along live, make sure to post your questions in the chat. If you're not following along line, you're welcome to join me on Wednesdays about 2 p.m. Central European Summer Time, where I record this uh, live, and you can get your questions answered. Uh, of course, the podcast is made available by my patrons that, amongst other things, can get seven days of early access to all of the content I po post at thelazygoldmaker.com. And if you want to do so, you can join us at uh, patreon.com slash thelazygoldmaker. Now, um, in today's episode, I'm going to talk about two things. We're going to talk about the 9.1 PTR. Uh, because there's some some news, a little bit more clarification about how legendary crafting is going to work. And of course, in a week, we will all be back in Outland, at least all the ones who care about Classic and TBC Classic. Um, and for many of you who have been Classic only players, this is going to be the first uh, expansion launch in a very long time. So Classic launch was something special, and expansion launch is a different beast. We'll talk about why. Um, and why I think that we can draw a lot of lessons from other expansion launches for how TBC prices are going to look. Of course, there are some differences in TBC, which we'll also cover, but um, it's exciting times. Expansion launches and patch launches and all of that, or even game launches, are the most exciting time to play an MMO. And TBC is certainly not going to be different. It's going to be the same. It's going to be super exciting. Now, before that, though, we're going to talk a little bit about the 9.1 PTR. And as our uh, Dirty Irby, uh, another Twitch streamer, he was diving into the PTR. I haven't been stacking on the PTR. I haven't done the rep grind. So I couldn't even attest to this if I wanted to. But you can, you can for a while now, have been able to get the recipe for Vestige, Vestige of Origins, which is the new optional reagent for the higher rank legendaries that we are going to craft in 9.1. Um, and um, you can craft those and get the recipe. It's from Honored with Death's Advance, which is the new reputation in Corthia. Um, and you can now also apply it to your crafts. And the way it currently works on the PTR, you can apply it to any rank legendary if you apply it, and it increases the rank by two. So a rank one legendary crafted with a Vestige of Origins is going to turn into an item level 225 or a rank three legendary. So then if you craft a rank 3 legendary with a vestige, it's going to be a rank 5. And a rank 4 with a vestige, it's going to be a rank 6. So what does that mean? Well, it means, number one, you need to have rank 3 and 4 unlocked if you want to craft a new rank 5 and 6. Um, but outside of that, there's no new like ranks or no new res uh, experience requirements to unlock the higher ranks. So we're going to get away with that without having to do that. Um, that does mean that players who want to enter the market will face the same barrier to entry as those of us who are already in it did back at launch. You'll have to craft a bunch of rank 1, 2, and 3 legendaries. Um, so that might see, we might see a lot of players <laughs> leveling their legendaries now because they realize that we're going to need rank 4. Um, and we could see them dumping their stock leading up to 9.1. So it, it's very possible that rank 2 and 3 legendaries are going to be a little choppy over the immediate future. Um, so, so that'll be interesting to see. Uh, of course, Vestige of Origins crafting costs are not finalized, so, because they're all over the place. I hope they're not finalized, because they're completely different. Um, but probably they're buying on pickup, and most likely some of them will be cheaper than others. Hopefully they don't make it so, uh, the tailoring one is just so much cheaper than the others that you have to have tailoring paired with every other crafting profession to do it. Um, if so, then I, I would just remove jewel crafting from my, um, from my death knight and, uh, and add like blacksmithing jewel crafting and then I'd level jewel crafting and tailoring on another alt. Uh, but that would be a lot of death's advanced, um, rep grinding as well. So hopefully we don't see that. Hopefully we don't, uh, but who knows? It could be, could be that that's the case. Um, I've not seen anyone craft a legendary yet, so I don't know, I haven't seen the craft uh, UI, uh, when I say craft I mean like actually going to the rune carver and turning it into a rank 5 or 6 legendary. Um, so to see like whether you need a rank 4 legendary to upgrade to rank 5 or if it works where 
like the current system where you can just upgrade any rank legendary to any higher rank legendary as long as you have what you need. I that's what I expect. Uh, but I've not I've not farmed the. I could have done it if I had bothered farming the rep. I could have crafted a rank five legendary for myself, and gone to the rune carver and seen what uh, whether or not he would upgrade my rank three to a rank five or whether I I at least could put in the basis. But since I've been slacking on the PTR because the idea of uh, farming rep, or grinding rep on the PTR sort of abhors me. That seems doing busy work on the PTR just seems boring. So hopefully I don't have to do that. Hopefully someone will come in saving me and, and uh, testing this um, for all of us so we can uh, we can learn from them instead of having to do it ourselves. Um, so obviously that does mean that I think legendaries will just be slightly more competitive in, in patch um, 9.1 because everyone who's leveled their legendaries will be ready to go. Um, the rep grind will obviously be important and hitting that hard um, you want to optimize your rep as much as possible on your legendary crafters to get to honored ASAP. Um, it does depend a little bit. Like you probably the rank six aren't going to be as important because you can't get enough solar cinders for those for like four weeks. But getting rank fives out onto the market, I think you can get those within like a week or two of the first uh, of the patch. Um, so being ready with rank fives as soon as people can craft them, that's going to be important. That's going to be very important. Um, but we'll see. Uh, there's still some time on the PTR. They're still changing a lot of stuff, and it, it still does not seem particularly finished this patch. So, I'm sure we'll be seeing more uh, more changes uh, before it goes live. So, um, but this is what it looks like now, and uh, it, it's looking like legendaries will still be the main the main way to make money with professions for sure. Um, so now we're going over to the other um, the other. Uh, the other big news currently going on, TBC, the fir first expansion of WoW, and that's coming next week for all of our, all of the classic players. Um, and for many of the people who play classic, I'm sure there are many of you who have no recent experience with how an expansion launch impacts the economy and, more importantly, perhaps the econo the economics of that expansion launch and of the new items and materials that are coming out in TBC. Um, and for TBC, I expect that we'll be seeing um, beha price behavior and sort of uh, supply demand behavior that's much closer to what we typically see on retail uh, launches, which is a at launch people will have a lot of resources, they'll have a lot of gold that they're ready to invest into gearing up and getting their character going. Uh, we already know that people are doing that. If you're reading like the classic WoW classic uh, Reddit, for instance, you'll see people are super elitist about how much gold you need to have in TBC. And of course, on day one, there'll be zero, not a single TBC material or item is out available for sale because no one has gone into Outland to gra gather them or craft them. Um, so what we will see is sustained high material prices material prices will be high and they will hit their highest point within the first week or so um, material prices usually stabilize to uh, whatever they will stick to within about a week and then they t usually hang around on that level for about a month um, now of course in tbc there are some differences to other expansions because we're getting flying from day one as soon as you hit level 70 and have 5k gold you go get epic flying and you are now much much faster at mining um so this will have an effect of course gathering will very quickly become more efficient than it is at like the first week when everyone's running around on ground mounts and just like mining fell iron in uh, um in uh, the hellfire peninsula of course, so um, so we'll see how that that could have an impact on material prices, but materials will be very expensive early on, and uh, as usual, if you're someone with not a lot of gold, the best way to make gold for you probably is to just focus on farming materials and selling them uh, as you get them. Make sure to always sell in large and even stack sizes. You can get 10-20% extra uh, per item easily by doing that. Um, and I know that with the old auction house, a lot of people post tons of items in stacks of one at expansion launches, which is very, very silly. 
Um, I expect we'll see a lot of that on TBC as well, but it's it's a really bad idea. You can buy those out and sell them for 10, 20% more if you want to in nice even stack sizes because people do not want to waste time on clicking uh, endlessly on the auction house. Um, so there will probably be some bottleneck materials as well. The bottleneck specific crafts or specific pr uh, professions, particularly during like the absolute first week uh, when people are really power leveling. Um, and if you if you can find any of these and corner them either by farming, uh, taking control of a farming area um, for primals, for instance, or whether you can be the first one to get access to a farming area, um, that can definitely give you a lot of profit if you're in the if you're the farming type. Um, and of course, with high material prices, it's also going to be very high prices for crafted items, and particularly for all of the power increasing crafted items, people will be really looking to get those ASAP. There's a lot of recipes in Classic and in TBC Classic. So many recipes for most professions. And they come from a lot of different sources. Um, for some of them, some of these recipes are going to be very, very valuable. Uh, both to just get the recipe as a drop and, more importantly, uh, in my opinion, getting the recipe to craft it for a profit. Um, some notable ones include, like, Almost all of the rare gem cuts are world drop recipes. Um, so if you're doing jewel crafting, then you'll want to be babysitting the auction house to try to pick up particularly some of the living ruby, um, really strong DPS increasing gems uh, and their recipes relatively cheaply, if you can. Um, because getting the right recipes is going to be super important. And if you're the first one with a spell power gem on your realm, and people are starting to get previous and want to get maximum damage going into Karazhan, then you're going to make a lot of money. You're going to make a lot of money. Um, so that's definitely something to work towards. Do check out your profession. Wowhead has really good... Uh, they have recipe lists for all of the professions, for like all of the new recipes and where they come from. So for some professions, you'll want to maybe focus on rep. For others, it's going to be world drops, which means just uh, camping the auction house or AOE farming, I guess. Um, for some, it's going to be from trainers. For some, it's going to be from specific mobs out in the world uh, or quest lines. Make sure you figure out what the most uh, important recipes that you want to go for are and start working towards those as you are leveling, even if you can. Like prioritize leveling in um, in the right dungeons to get scenario and expedition rep, is that, if that's something you want. Um, so there's a lot of stuff going on there. Um, another thing that's going to be important is early on cool profession cooldowns. Uh, and if you have cooldown alts, you can take advantage of this. In particular, the tailoring cooldowns. Because Warlocks are super good in TBC. Loads of people are going to play Warlock. Uh, Warlock's previous gear is from cra crafted from tailoring and it requires the various daily cooldown cloths. So what does that mean? Well, it does mean that if you have a bunch of extra level 60 alts, you can get those recipes relatively quickly. You can crank out more and more of those that are going to be a heavy bottleneck because they are time-gated by the number of tailors on the, ser on the server. Uh, a lot of people have been planning to crank those out already. Uh, and some players, some people are stockpiling 20, 30k gold for TBC launch so that they can just pay their way through um, initial gearing. So this is definitely something to um, to be that you can take advantage of. You don't have to, but if you have the ability, if you have some level 60s or you like leveling, then get it ready. Um, so that's uh, that's great. Um, another thing to mention: enchanting shuffles and uh, enchanting materials. I checked this on my realm. Uh, this enchanting now requires you to have leveled enchanting to the right level. Uh, so that means that enchanting materials, particularly leveling enchanting materials are going to be much harder to come by. Um, and this is going to have a large effect because a lot of people want to be enchanters in uh, TBC because it gives you a, a large uh, stat bonus on your ring enchants. Um, and that's actually the first gold making method I learned. That was in TBC. I learned how to shuffle vision dust for people leveling enchanting. And right now on my classic realm, the vision dust shuffle is incredibly profitable. Um, and I expect that a lot of these enchanting shuffles will be quite profitable down the line when people, uh, when we've churned through the overflow of stuff that people have right now because they're still playing classic. 
and uh, the people who now want to level enchanting have to generate their mats on their own. Um, so if you have the ability to level enchanting to a, on a disenchanter, um, you can potentially make quite a bit of money with uh, some of the enchanting shuffles uh, from Classic that were never really profitable during actual Classic. Um, one last thing to note that Blizzard recently made a change that uh, where all limited supply vendor recipes are no longer limited supply in TBC. Uh, instead, they are unlimited supply, but buy on pickup. I think this is an anti-botting measure, because the just trying to buy the the recipe competing against bots or people just camping with automation is just terrible gameplay. Um, so that seems to me like mostly just an anti-botting measure. It is gonna lower the barrier to entry a little bit because you're no, no longer like capped to how many people or how fast the vendor restocks. But for the most part, this has never really been an issue because people just buy the limited edition stuff and just post it to the auction house. Um, and the only real question is how much you have to pay through the nose to get it. But uh, but yeah. So that was it for what I was going to talk about for TBC. And we do have uh, several questions today, which is great. I have one from a patron first that we got uh, ahead of the show. Uh, I currently have all Shadowlands Professions maxed out using six characters. I have six more tunes soon to be max level, which means I will have 12 profession slots for whatever is the optimal setup. I'm looking for optimal usage for five to 10 minutes a day. Alchemy Engineering for all of them, question mark. Uh, thank you. Uh, pretty much, pretty much. Alchemy Engineering is like the best uh, bang for your buck for just logging in and clicking two buttons every day. Uh, particularly if you have all of the others, since you have all of the other professions already. Uh, there's pretty much no other benefits. There's like a few ones with like garrisons and some other uh, methods, but they are a little more time consuming. I don't find them worth it. Don't quite find them worth it. Um, so for me, I would uh, I would suggest just going Alchemy Engineering on, uh, on all of them. Um, that's what I do on all of my extra professionals. They don't even have to be level 60 for that. You can even do that on level 10 characters. Um, getting, um, getting alchemy and, uh, Mr. Pandaria engineering, which is what you care about. So we have a couple of questions from Twitch chat as well. We have one from Rook Jackson. Uh, for previously flying patches, there's usually a surge in raw commodity prices due to demand and a drop in raw commodity prices due to flying being unlocked. Uh, what are you expecting the raw material market and the crafted gear market to look like in response to this? Um, I think we're going to see what we typically see, uh, which is going to be a surge leading up to the patch. Uh, like the last week and then perhaps early on in the patch. In Shadowlands, this is going to depend quite a bit on exactly the schedule, how the schedule works out for when you can actually upgrade your legendaries to rank 5. Because that has been the main material dump by far. Uh, and that affects the largest amount of materials. It does not affect herbs. For herbs, I think we'll just see the very, very similar to what we've seen in, in earlier patches where you get flying. Um, so like I'd look to uh, um, to 8.2 uh, in BFA, look at herb prices on your realm to get an idea of what I expect uh, herb prices to do um, over the um, over the launch of 9.1. And then for, for the other materials, for everything that goes into legendaries, those are different from what they've been in the past. We've never had something like legendaries drawing this many materials into itself. Um, so, um, so I'm not sure for that. Uh, and yes, Rook Jackson, that data is available. You can check that out on the undermindjournal.com. You can draw those, I don't know exactly how far back those graphs go, but they go back to like 2016 at least. Um, so uh, you can check that out on for your realm specifically. Uh, which is going to be the best bet. And then for crafted items, they're going to sort of follow the same trend as the materials, because it's the demand from crafted materials that pulls the the material prices up. Uh, that's because the, the finished items are useful. Um, and then a question from Eliath. Do you think it would be worth to get legendaries to rank 3 for those who don't have the gold or time to get them to rank 4? Um, yes, because with uh, with how it currently looks, you need a rank 3 recipe and the Vestige of Origins, and you can craft rank 5 legendaries. 
uh, in 9.1. So, and that's the ones that are going to sell well for the first part of 9.1. So I would absolutely uh, say that it's worth getting rank 3 legendaries. Um, might not make your money back right now. I mean, I'm still selling rank 2s and rank 3s and even rank 1s for a profit right now. Not all of the recipes though. Just a smaller subset, which varies a, li a little bit by day by day. But you can absolutely make money with the lower rank, lower rank recipes right now. And with Vestige of Origins and rank 5 being crafted from a rank 3 base recipe. Then yes, I absolutely think that it's going to be worth it in 9.1 as well. So, that's going to be it for me today. Uh, thank you so much for um, for watching, for coming with your questions. I hope you enjoyed the show. If you do and you want to read about gold making, then you can do so at thelazygoldmaker.com. If you want to support the show, you can do so at patreon.com slash thelazygoldmaker. Well, a final thank you to my patrons. I wish you all a very profitable week. Goodbye, guys.